Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Trusted Tech Talks podcast with me, Aidan Popo, Senior Software Consultant. This week, I'm joined with Ricky Duckworth, Senior Software Engineer at Cinch, to discuss the pros and cons of pair programming. Thanks for joining me, Ricky. Hello, Aidan. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good. Good. Good, good Thanks. Stuff. Yeah, so me and you, uh, we go back years, don't we? Um, yeah, we do, we do. It's a, it's a funny story, really. Um, I'll, I'll let you tell it. You're, you're, yeah. you're the man to tell it. Yeah, so many, many years ago, a um, weekend, at the o'clock in the morning, I bumped into Ricky in a, in a uh, takeaway shop, um, just chatting as you do merrily. And um, <laughs> yeah, just chatting. We had all these uh, React developer at the time. Um, and... Yeah, we're just like, well, I recruit software developers and we just sort of, relationships blossom from there, really. Yeah. Like, like, gigs and, uh, and then you want to sing recently. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. Like, we bumped into each other, just started talking like out of the blue randomly. Didn't clock for a few minutes. Like, I, I think you asked me what, what my job was and I replied that I'm, I was a React developer, strictly a React developer at the time. And you were like, no way, I can't believe it. <laughs> and yeah, from, from, from there, like we've we've had both a working relationship and um, yeah, like a, a friendship relationship as well. Yeah. So it's, it's been quality, mate. It's, it's yeah. been good knowing you all these years, to be honest. Yeah, oh, yeah so this week's um, topic is going to be the pros and cons of, of pair and mob programming. And you want to sort of get it from an aspect of a, of a social aspect, motivational, as well as touching on production, because I feel um, it's been covered a lot with regards to Code production and, and code quality. So just getting it from the, the social side, really. Mm. So just for the listeners who who aren't familiar with pair and mob programming, do you, do you want to just give us a brief overview, Ricky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, traditionally, like uh, as a programmer, for most of my career, I've been used to working by myself. You know, in silo, uh, yeah. even in a team, even in a squad, even in an agile squad. You know, just given given work to do, and one developer work on one ticket, one work on another. Sometimes yeah. you might have a bit of crossover. Um, and then, you know, recently, like the past few years, um, I was working at RS Components a couple of years ago and um, started started using it there, uh, even before that at Arcadia Group. Um, but that was my first experience. It was only a short contract, so I didn't get too much exposure. Mm. But yeah, um, instead of working by yourself, you end up actually working on a piece of work just directly with another developer in pair programming or yeah. as part of mob programming, you'll work with multiple developers and also other members of the squad, like designers maybe or BAs or DevOps. Um, and yeah, that, yeah, it's um, it's a different way of working. And uh, yeah, we'll go into the, the pros of it and, and yeah. maybe some of the cons as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I think you touched on this when we, we spoke yesterday and um, we had a brief call about, about the podcast and it, it didn't even spring to mind to me. We've obviously, you know, most people working fully remote or having a, a hybrid approach. Pair programming also covers on that social side of, of having interaction and and motivation as well so mm. you know it's been a big help for you hasn't it um, yeah yeah definitely i mean obviously with lockdown like being a programmer is one of the one of the worst well not the worst obviously it's nothing compared to um you know the nhs bless them and all the, all the stuff they've done for us but yeah, yeah you know like it's it's been really really difficult i mean myself like i suffer with bipolar and um being stuck in the same four walls like i've, I've mm. noticed the drastic effect it's had on my mental health and um Not having a routine like, as well yeah yeah exactly like it's 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 just um it's just a completely different world that we're living in now and mm. um you know with working remotely um pair programming and more programming it's become like a, a real good factor of that but in turn it's been a massive massive help like in mm. terms of helping me you know stay focused helping me be positive while i'm working because you know you're working with your squad all, all, all yeah. day every day almost and if you've got a squad that you get on with which i'm lucky that i really really do the, the squad mm. that i work in at since you know it's one of the best squads that i've worked in yeah. um both on a personal level and due to the way that the squads are, are, are laid out as well which um we'll probably touch on at some point because that plays a big part in how mob programming works um, yeah. you know throughout the team um which is how, how we do it since we do it with with mob programmers most of the time in my squad specifically you know each squad has autonomy but yeah, yeah. that social side it's a huge part of it you get to know your team better um you know that the, there's a lot more respect that comes out of it and a lot more ideas that are spread about which again we'll touch into in, in a bit but yeah it's um yeah. It's a, cool. and then from a motivational um point of view is it the fact that, that you don't want to let the, the team down when you, you're solving the, the ticket and the problem? Or is it the fact that you can learn from different people and a mixture of both? 
Yeah, it's it's a mixture of both. And um, you know, like sometimes I, I find it myself, like I said, I've got bipolar and ADD, and I, I can end up sort of not procrastinating, but sort of struggling with the tasks that I find more meaningful. And I mean, this is down to me personally. And if you pair programming on them, it it it, it makes you just work harder because you, you you know you want to yeah. you, you don't want to seem like you, you, you're coming across lazy or anything yeah but on the on the flip side as well like um you know it's it's also seeing like get, getting feedback on your code mm. from from both points of view if you get a positive feedback you know that's really endearing and it, it motivates yeah. you and it, it makes you want to get that as well it makes you want to show your team what you're capable of and then if you get constructive feedback as well, that's just, that's only going to improve you. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's always a good, uh, as a programmer, you're always wanting to learn. And, um, you know, it's, it's different in comparison to like in, in, in other, in other lines of work. It, sometimes it could be like, you know, you've got someone listening to your call and, um, yeah. you, you know, th th that can sometimes seem like something that's quite like overpowering and right. make you make you worry and make you anxious but yeah you find as 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 a if you're in a good squad you know um as my programmer it's it's really endearing and really beneficial to um you know your confidence as a programmer yeah grow and develop from from you can sort of pick especially with mob program you can pick skills from different members of your squad and mm. you know, and grow and develop and, and it will benefit the the squad and if there's like different like diversity in the squad yeah. you can learn yeah. from different people um so no that, that's, that's it's really cool and it's, it's nice obviously you touched on it from a social point of view because i personally didn't think of it from that point of view i just thought of it from so production and, and coding yeah. Yeah, yeah and then the quality of the code as well you know i don't know is, is that going to be better with you know more eyes on it and more people working um, yeah, so in interesting. You touched on something at the start there about um, the diversity in your squad, and you know, yeah. bringing in different different talent from your squad. And that w when you're pair programming and when you're working by yourself, you definitely don't get that insight. Yeah. But if, 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 like you say, if you bring someone who's um, you know a back end engineer and you're working on front end, or bring in someone that's DevOps, or so, you know, even someone that's a, a BA or a, or a UI designer, you UX designer. A start, oh, sorry, interrupted you there, but even like uh, even from the, from the types of industries they've worked in. I've yeah. noticed from developers that have been in say digital agencies or been in mm -hmm. you know fast-paced startups where they've, they've had to wear many hats. Definitely, so definitely. From, from somebody think... who's been from like a uh, I don't know, big FTSE one hundred company, you know, there's mm -hmm. if I think you can get diversity from from different coding backgrounds as well. A hundred percent. So you touched on it on your um, you know, in your previous podcast. Well, one of your previous podcasts, sorry. And um, you know, myself would buy part of the run fully self-taught. You know, I have failed GCS and IT and I dropped out of school when I was 16 but at that point I was already building flash websites and actions yeah so um you know I, I I come we did a team building exercise the other day and it was like you know what do you think the strengths are and I, I, I said it in part I was thinking about it because of your podcast about neurodiversity but I said you know that that's a big part of it and I've always felt that I've always thought outside the box and it's yeah. something that developers in previous roles have picked up on but yeah, yeah but back to your point about um the, the code um you know the quality of the code when it comes to pair programming versus yeah. and mob programming versus um, by yourself. Um, traditionally, as, as a programmer, working by yourself, you know, you'd make the changes, you do the piece of work that you designated to do, at least working in like an agile environment or, you know, like something similar yeah. in, in, in a squad. And you'd make your changes and you'd push that up to the, the repository of code. But before it gets merged into the, the main code, the code that's going onto the live website, yeah. you have to get another developer to review it to uh, go through make sure the codes are up to stand standard and ideally that it's done in the best way that it can be you know performance etc it's basically to get another set of eyes on it and make yeah. sure that you've done spot the best check. job yeah yeah exactly yeah uh, but the problem with that is uh, and i've i've done this myself is you can end up missing a lot from that a lot of context you basically got a screen where you're looking at the previous code and the new code that's coming in and you're comparing it and like you can miss so much from that. I mean, you can look at how the website's working with this new code, but you don't get to understand like the context of what the, the developer was thinking at the time and yeah. why they've took that approach. And like when you're pair with mob programming, like you've just got that as, as a side effect of what you're doing. Um, you know, it's 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 so wonderful for that. I have I've I've had it myself um a few times where I've done something I'm like why are you do, why are you doing it that way and again like as I said before yeah. as a programmer you don't take that as criticism you you take that constructively and yeah say it. Or, or you counteract it with your own arguments if you if you've got 
you know, if you've got your opinion on why it should be done a certain yeah. way, and that can be constructive to them. So it, yeah. it works both ways as well, especially you, because with more, more programming, you're meant to switch between the developers and we'll touch on that in a bit, but go on, go ahead. Yeah, no, so just touching on that, we've, you've said, you know, you, you'll do something and then they'll ask, why have you done this, um, this way? Have you ever had it where you were, um, where you've like dis disagreed on, on do you know how how does that happen if if is because that could be a con couldn't it if you haven't got a collaborative team like your current team like singe and it might be a bit of a not as i won't say toxic environment but not a friendly um environment and you've you sort of clashing with two different styles of of solving a problem it's, it's not, definitely be a con 100 percent. Yeah. i'm lucky that my experience with mob and pair program has never encountered that but i've been in environments certainly where there's a clash between developers and that like, oh, i would have hated pair programming with them because yeah you, you wouldn't you, you just have to be fighting everything that you're saying and that I, I'd imagine, though, in, in that sort of squad, they probably wouldn't adopt pair and mob programming yeah. because they wouldn't see the benefit of it when they're doing it. So, so that, uh, yeah, that's going on to the next question. So the, the culture and the collaboration needs to be spot on to implement a good, you know, successful mob and pair programming. Like I've been really lucky that the roles that I've had, and in fact, most of the roles that I've been in, are, I've been in, because I come from a contracting background where I've, I've worked from many different companies mm. um, that I've gone on, gone on full time at Cinch. Um, but yeah, that, th there's been roles that I've been in where I've wished that I could stay on there, but there have been a couple of roles that I've been in, and again, not naming any names, where that I couldn't wait to get out. Yeah. And at those times, like th looking back on it, like, I'm glad that obviously we were pair programming because the, the heads that were put in, like, I, yeah. I just couldn't get my voice across. And there yeah. was many, many, many different reasons, political, individual, company-wide, like, yeah. there, there were so many different factors in those couple of roles that, that, but there was no way that me, myself, um, especially as a contractor, one of them was a palm role. Um, but yeah, if, why like, I wouldn't have been able to actually get mm. my point across. Yeah. Um, not, not without working too hard. Um, yeah. so that, yeah, well, I, side as well. Um, if you mentioned it, but it could obviously create more collaboration, um, and, and help with, you know, we've, um, we've crossing over ideas as well and bond the team together with them all working together in a bit of teamwork, working on, on, on the ticket. But like you said, you know, you've got to have that foundation first. Um, yeah. Like people, are, like you said, aren't putting heads. Yeah. Is there any it's other, somewhere. any other like, benefits you think like that, that stand out that we've not touched on? I know we've sort of touched on like the more social side. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was I, a good question actually here. If there was, say, a software house that's thinking of implementing pair or mob programming, um, is there anything that you'd you'd say to them? You know, to, to to show them like the benefits of of implementing it. Yeah. So so going back um go, going back to what you said about is, is there anything we haven't touched on? I can think of like th there's one thing that I was actually just thinking about just before you said that. Um, yeah. And that was going back to what you were saying about like the social side of it and the, the personal side of it. Um, I was touching on mental health. Like there's one thing that I didn't touch on there, and um, that's with mob programming. You you tend to have a rule where each developer is only working on it for like a set interval, let's say thirty minutes time, right. um, and then like you you meant to hand it over to the next one, and that way you know you will get an equal amount of time and an equal input. Um, but yeah. also like it saves you from burning out massively, um, mm. and also just having another another mind working on it saves you from burnout. You don't end up going down red herrings as much. Um, yeah. The amount of problems that I've spotted uh, because of another pair of eyes before like it would have happened that would have probably took me ages. Um, yeah. So one of my clients I've got I've got in mind at the moment, they um nine people in two squads, but they're testers, they've got actual testers on not they don't do unit testing in QA so, like yeah, they've got they've got QA function. Yeah, yeah. So okay, okay. Um yeah, yeah, and and you know, QA is uh, Apart, especially QAEs. I mean, even QAs, because having that higher level, that's what I said before about BAs and POs going into it. Um, but if, if you've got that higher level and people who are looking at it from a point of view outside of the programmer, that can help fundamentally mm -hmm. as well. You know, someone who's looking at it from the point of view of testing, they're, yeah. they're probably already run, running through testing it in their head and they're looking at it and thinking, mm, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's not like yeah user acceptable so um what, so from from sort of the, obviously just be having low like you know solo developers you know doing tickets to say you know these guys even implementing do they only implement say pair programming yeah so what what benefit would would they would they see if they doubled up on the tickets 
I you mean, know, cool because you don't, I've not really, I've given you a really open question here. You know, no, no, of course. Any of course. variables, but yeah. The, the, the thing is that it might not be, you know, like more programming might not be better for them. They might find that pair programming is actually better for them. They might find yeah. that in, individual programming is, you know, it's, it's always, um, you know, what, what, Case. The variables. Yeah, yeah. What fits your, your case? But you know, there's benefits to more programming that pair programming might not have. I mean, traditionally, pair programming is just between two developers. You know, you can easily do pair programming with a QA and a. But I, what I've experienced is that pair programming. It's not like that. It's, it's pair programming between two developers. That might be back end yeah. and front end. Part of it, another part of it, is the reduction of meetings because like you're working together. And because it's more programming, where that like, you're bringing in the whole team. Like if you need to bring in the designer. You just bring in the designer on the piece of work. You don't have to set up a meeting. Yeah. Like you just say, like, I'm working with you more today on agile, this. Agile, yeah. yeah exa exactly. It is more yeah. agile. So, like, you know, I, I might think I want to do it this way, but I'm worried that if I do it this way, when it goes to code review, other developers are going to be like, why have you done it that way? And then you have yeah. to defend yourself. But when, you, when you're when you mob programming and pair programming, of course, yeah. you do, you're doing that in real time. So you yeah. get to get that discussion straight Real away they feedback really isn't it on it yeah exactly exactly yeah um and there's there's also the side of it of technical debt um with technical debt you know that's usually stuff that comes out of almost in, in finished work or work that's been done and has missed something Right. Um, but when you got other pairs of eyes, again talking about from a whole team point of view not just a programmer if you've got like you know a a, a a designer coming in on it or like a BA like um or, or a PO like they're gonna spot things that you're not gonna spot when you're building it because when you get so far down into the nitty-gritty you're basically focused on the task at hand and yeah. you, you can get it's it's hard to see the bigger picture like it's a real talent to even step back and see the bigger picture and even when you can do that you're still gonna miss things but if yeah. you've got another another brain there another pair of eyes like especially with that diversity mm. um both on on the on the you know um career side and position side and yeah. like you say on the actual um you know diversity within people yeah you save so much time like um yeah. making mistakes and and missing things that and like you flipped on there um with regards to you know solving the problem in real time um and and not getting it all the way into production um and then solving the problem um, exactly yeah the, yeah the amount of overhead that comes with that you know it can be a nightmare and you can end up finding yourself like in a panic fixing that thing so then you mm -hmm. might end up rushing fixing it and it doesn't come out as good quality just to um, get it in production to get it live yeah, ex exactly yeah yeah, yeah That's exactly cool, cool. I, I think i've pretty much covered everything is there anything you want to touch on at all like we feel like no, I, th I think that if, if anyone's any interested in mob programming, you know, there's there's so much um, documentation and guides out there. Um, you know, there's stuff on the Agile Alliance um, that, in fact, I've got a couple of my notes at the end there from. Um, that are, they're incredible and they, they explain it in ways that are so easy to understand and you can just you can yeah. basically um, infer the benefits just from reading it. And it's not hard to implement. You yeah. know, you can, just, you can just try it for a few days. If it's not working for you, so yeah, that's the old way. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Trusted Tech Talks podcast with me, Aidan Popo, and my guest speaker, Ricky Duckworth, a senior software engineer at Cinch. If you've enjoyed this discussion around the pros and cons of pair programming and have any further questions for me or Ricky, please get in touch via LinkedIn um, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on LinkedIn, Spotify, so you never miss another Trusted Tech Talks episode.